Today, I'm going to give you some simple yet highly effective ways to increase your bar profits that you can start implementing right away. Okay, how are you doing today? It is Dave Allred, the real barman here from barpatrol.net and therealbarman.com. So before we dive into these powerfully effective methods to help skyrocket your monthly bar profits, first, I want to say that in this video, uh, we're not going to be discussing marketing techniques. Okay, it doesn't take Stephen Hawking to tell you that bringing in more people is going to increase your sales. That's just basic math. Okay, these are strategies that you can put into action right now that will start to help your bottom line. Okay, second, I want to clarify the difference between cost control and frugality to the point that quality suffers. Okay, sending out a lemon drop martini to a table with a shriveled lemon as a garnish, crusty from age and dehydration because you want to save three cents is hardly the magic recipe for boosting sales and growing repeat customers. Okay, we want to be smart and cost conscious, but we don't want to take on the qualities of George Costanza fishing out a chocolate eclair from the trash, okay, for you Seinfeld fans out there. Okay, adopting that reputation will eventually destroy everything you're working towards and any chance of increasing your profits. In other words, you can't sacrifice quality for the purpose of cutting costs. Okay, so the focus is quality without unnecessary extravagance. Okay, so that's all the lecturing and chastising I'm going to do for you today. Let's get to the seven most effective methods we can use to increase our bar profits. Number one is going to be upsell premium products. And I've spoken about this before because it is so powerful. And of course, upselling is not some new fad or ancient secret buried in the hallowed tombs of Egypt. But let me ask you this. Do you have upselling built into your systems? In other words, are your servers and bartenders required to upsell every single item? All right, do you train them properly? Or do you casually holler it from your office once per month while playing computer solitaire? You're like, don't forget, you know, it's upsell or whatever. All right, if you make it a rule to have your staff upsell on every single order, the results will astound you. And I'm not going to go into upselling you know, like bacon and cheese on a burger, even though that needs to be done as well on the food side, but we're talking about bar today. What I want to give you is the simplest technique in the world for increasing your bar profits. It's so simple, a drunken squirrel could do it, okay? It goes something like this. Guest, I'll have a vodka tonic. Bartender, sure. Would you like Grey Goose or Belvedere? Or simply, sure. What's your favorite vodka? That's it. You know, is that too tough to implement? Do I need to slow down? Okay, it's really just that simple. Because four out of five times, the guests will choose a premium brand because they don't want to look like a cheap ass in front of their friends. And that's the truth. All right, and anyone who knows the bar industry knows that premium liquor has a higher profit margin than well liquors. And yes, they have a higher cost percentage, but remember, we're not putting percentages in the bank. We're putting moolah in the bank. All right, this is the easiest way ever to get an instant profit boost. In addition, your staff should be guiding them to the cocktail menu, which should have your highest profit items on there as well. Or it had better have your highest profit menu items on there because you built it. Okay, more on menu item costing coming up. All right, number two, track your bar and liquor inventory. And inventory management is my bread and butter for a reason. Because there is no faster and more clear-cut path to increase your bar profits immediately than to stop the bleeding. And by that, I mean your bartenders from giving away your profits like those people during timeouts at basketball games shooting cylinder-shaped t-shirts into the crowd out of a handheld cannon. All right, if you're using outdated inventory methods like a clipboard with pen and paper or even Excel spreadsheet, you'll be getting the same mediocre results. All right, it's the same reason nobody uses fax, fax machines anymore, okay, because they're inefficient and they suck, just like your old school inventory methods. All right, I'm not going to go into great detail on inventory systems here. Just find a system that's able to track your variance, which is defined as the difference between what your bartenders are ringing into the POS system versus what they actually pour. All right, this knowledge alone will save the average mid-sized bar $5,000 per month easily. All right, you are, of course, welcome to check out Bar Patrol Inventory app if the mood fancies you. All right, it will change your life. Number three, item cost your entire menu. So if you're just throwing cocktails on the menu because you think they're cool or they taste totally awesome, I want you to take a rubber band I want you to put it around your wrist. I want you to pull it back as far as you can. And I want you to let go. All right, feel that pain from the snap? That's the pain of you putting tasty drinks on the menu instead of profitable drinks. All right, but the truth is you can have both. And if you know nothing about item costing, it's basically determining which ingredients to put into your menu items that will bring you the most profit. And it also tells you how much to price each drink at so it's fair to the guests but profitable to the business. 
Okay, for example, I was at a bar the other night with my wife and she ordered a Cosmopolitan on the drink menu for $10. And since I can't go to a bar without scrutinizing and evaluating everything I see, to my wife's great annoyance, uh, I asked the bartender how they make it. And he told me it was made with two ounces of Grey Goose Citron, one ounce of Cointreau, and a half ounce of cranberry juice and fresh lime juice. And this is a common drink recipe and portion for many cocktail menus I see, as far as the portions and the brands they use. So let's go check that out. All right, like... If we go inside the Bar Patrol software and we menu engineer that sucker, you can see all the ingredients right there. And you can see the data below. The price is $10. The total cost of the drink is $352. Putting the cost percentage at a whopping 35.22% and the profit at $648. Now, if you're the owner or bar manager and you're not item costing, you're just thinking, yeah, that's a tasty drink. And it was. My wife liked it. But it's a basic Cosmo. And it tasted as it should. But using these insights, we can take a look and determine that one, this ain't going to fly at 35% pour cost. And two, these are three possible metrics you can adjust here. All right, you can either raise the price of the drink, use different ingredients, and or alter the portion size. And if you're a high-end fancy schmancy bar, raising the price is not a problem. You could easily charge $12 or $13 and lower the cost percentage and raise the profit margin. So what happens if we change the price to $12? A okay, cost percentage goes down six points and the profit goes up $2 and that's better, but we're still at 29%. But if you're a simple sports bar or pub or bar restaurant, your guests probably aren't paying $12 or $13 for a Cosmo. So let's look at what happens when we alter the ingredients and portion sizes. All right, first off, you don't need three ounces of liquor in a Cosmo. All right, that's a double shot. 2.25 ounces will do nicely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a full shot of vodka at 1.5 ounces and three quarters of an ounce of orange liqueur. All right, second, we're going to change Grey Goose Citron to Absolute Citron and Cointreau to Triple Sec. You know, after all, Absolute is still a reputable brand name and most people at a mid-level bar restaurant could care less if you use basic Triple Sec instead of Cointreau. Okay, as you can see, the results are dramatic. Your total cost is down to $1.48, your cost percentage dropped 20 points to 14.79 and your profit is now up to 852. And we didn't even change the price. It's still $10. You're now making $2.04 more per drink per Cosmo, and that's just one drink on the menu. All right, when you do it to all of them, your profits are going to soar and your guests are still getting a great drink. Okay? We're not giving them you know, Gilby's vodka, no offense to Gilby's. All right, this is just so simple, but most bar managers aren't breaking down their item costing per drink and it's costing them dearly. And as a final note, you'll notice that I included every ingredient that goes into the drink, into the Cosmo, including the cranberry juice and the lime juice, not just the alcohol. All right, this is a big rookie mistake made by amateur managers. So make sure you item cost everything so you know your cost percentage and your profits for that drink. All right, phew, that was some good stuff there. All right. All right. Let's go on to number four, which is set your portion sizes. And this is sort of a sister strategy to what we just talked about with item costing because portion size is so important. I mean, do you ever know what your portions, uh, what your portions of your bartenders, what they're pouring for shots and mixed drinks and martinis and wine? Do you? All right. If you do, that's good. But a better question would be, are your portion sizes what they should be? And do you know if the bartenders are actually pouring these portion sizes that they're supposed to be pouring? I right, see above step on tracking inventory and variance because with a good inventory system, you can see what they're doing. Okay. In the case of portions, martinis are the worst. All right. Based on all the years of inventory and, and uh, consulting that I've done, the average martini going out contains about three and a half ounces of liquor. All right. That's the average pour for a martini. Sometimes it's worse. Okay. That's a double shot plus another half ounce for only a $2 upcharge usually. All right, hopefully I don't need to explain why portioning is so important. And if you don't know, you can send me an email and ask, but first slap yourself in the face and wake the f up. All right, if you are perfectly aware of why it's so important, I apologize for censor swearing and congratulations. All right, and then if you have no idea what your portion should be, here is a quick portioning guide for you to follow. Number five, beware the glassware. And nobody ever thinks about glassware when it comes to bar profits beyond how pretty they are. 
All right, but here's the truth. If you have giant glassware, you might as well set your cash on fire because your profits are turning to ashes before your very eyes. And the reason is because your bartenders feel constant pressure from your guests to fill the liquid to the top of the glass, or at least near the top of the glass. And it doesn't matter if you tell them not to fill it up beyond a certain point. All right, the guests are going to bitch about it that the pour is too low and the bartenders will accommodate by filling it up. And then your plan to set portion sizes goes right out the door. Okay, so again, unless you're a high-end place who can charge more for drinks and can't afford to have giant glassware, all right, here's my suggestion for glassware sizes. Okay, number six is create a sales competition. Okay, there's nothing like some good old-fashioned healthy competition to drive people to excel and reach their potential. All right, there are many different ways to go about this. Tracking individual sales is tough because some work on busier nights than others or they work longer hours than others. But if you have them sell like an individual product like a brand of wine, like how much La Crema Chardonnay they can sell. Okay, you can base it on how many bottles they've sold divided by the number of hours that they've worked. Okay, got it? Uh, or it doesn't have to be wine. Okay, you can do it for whoever sells the most seafood platters. All right, just make sure that your contest is for your most profitable items. Or I'm going to have to come at you with a bayonet and track you down. Okay, or better yet, I love a team exercise. So instead of competing against each other, which can sometimes lead to you know ugliness or cheating, Okay, you could say if we sell X amount of bottles of X brand wine this week, we get to go on a field trip to X brewery. Okay, a lot of X's there. So get creative. Whatever you're paying out for the prize is going to be minuscule compared to the sales and profits you get from the contest. Okay, and then number seven, add flights to your menu. And this could be any combination of things. You can serve flights for draft beer, wine, whiskey, scotch, tequila, anything you want. Because I'll tell you this right now, people get excited about flights because it's one of the hardest things to do when you're looking at the menu, you're trying to decide what you want. Okay, so being able to have a taster of four or five or six different styles of beer or wine or liquor or whatever you're serving is just flat out fun. All right, in addition, you can uh, price your flights out to make sure you're making a very good profit because people don't have flights that often. All right, so they're not going to be able to like price compare in their minds. Does that make sense? Like if you order a pint of nice IPA, you expect to pay maybe five to seven dollars on average. So if a guest sees like one for like nine dollars, they might be like, eh, that's too expensive because they can price compare. All right, they already have a gauge, but with four ounce pours of like five different types of beer, you know, who can price compare in their mind with that? Okay, they don't have it that often. So make sure you are charging the right amount to make more profits from your flights than you would from a normal pour of that same brand. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, good. So that's seven insanely effective ways to increase your bar profits. And since today I'm feeling so magnanimous, I'm gonna give you a bonus strategy today. Okay, and it's a bonus strategy because it takes a bit more to get going than just you know adding flights or changing your glass sizes. Okay, but the reward is so much bigger. So bonus strategy number eight is launch a bar and catering business. And as long as you have a liquor license for your brick and mortar bar or restaurant, you should be able to do this in most states. Okay, this strategy has massive potential beyond what you can even ima imagine, imagine, okay, inside that beautifully shaped skull of yours. Okay, I've worked with one of the most successful bar catering owners this side of Las Vegas, and his profit margins and revenue are insane. Okay, one of the bar uh, that he has earns like a million dollars per year in sales, which is, you know, sort of average. But from that bar and using that liquor license, he's able to run a bar catering business on the side. No food. It's just beer, liquor, and wine for events and weddings and so on and so forth. And the catering side brings in about $800,000 per year. Okay, he just increased his sales $800,000 by adding bar catering. All right, but that's not the end of it. With the $1 million he makes from his brick and mortar bar, his cost percentage runs about 20%, which means he makes $800,000 in profit. Okay, we're not including labor and all that, just cost of goods. All right, but on the catering side, because he sells the event with package deals, the people at the events end up not drinking nearly what he sells to them, and the guests can't take the alcohol home. Okay, it's against the law. So he's able to keep it and sell that same alcohol on his next event, so his cost percentage on the catering side runs like three to five percent. 
Is that nuts or what? That means if we take the average, which is 4%, he's making $768,000 off the $800,000, a 96% profit margin. So I've been trying to find the time to put, put together a course for how to do this business because I have the resource and my friend to do this, the exact blueprint. So I'll let you know if and when it ever comes out, if I find time. And if you're interested in doing this, you, know, you can make a lot of money. Okay, so that's it. No more bonus strategies. Uh, that's going to do it for the day. I hope this did something for you. I do appreciate you hanging out with me. I am going to see you next time. I'm out. <laughs>